In early 2020, the COVID-19 coronavirus was beginning its infection around the world. By mid-March, a pandemic was declared by the World Health Organization, and the virus was in the United States and Vermont. On March 13th, Governor Phil Scott declared a state of emergency, and on March 26th, issued a stay-at-home, stay-safe order, directing schools to remain dismissed and all non-essential gathering of groups of people to end. To document this historic event and the effect on our community, Marshfield Story Project gathered together mentors and mentees from Twinfield Union School to share how they are adapting to life during COVID-19. You know, Marshfield Story Project is really interested in having everyone in our community gather together. Uh, you know, we're really looking to preserve Marshfield's history and memory through video interviews. Um, we were doing single interviews, but this is such a special time with the pandemic, so we thought it would be really great to do a story circle and get your experiences documented and what it's being like for you right now at this time. So I'm going to assign a talking order. So just remember who you follow, and I'm going to ask you each to just unmute, tell us your full name, and then just as a, a way, by way of introduction, tell us something you miss the most during this pandemic time. So uh, let's do a talking order. So how about Glenda and Helen and Susan, and then Alice, Samara, and Atia, okay? So Glenda, um, you're already unmuted. But this so, is so this is just a little warm up to give us all a chance to. What? Something is happening here with the chat. Well, Pam, Pam was doing something in chat. Oh, okay. So she's she's uh, written down the talking order in case you forget. <laughs> all right. So Glenda. We're just gonna go around once and warm up and then I'll talk about the process before we move into the story circle. So if you can tell us your full name and tell us what you miss the most. You want, you want the whole Glenda Jane Lawrence Bissex. And I'm an outsider here. I checked with Pam, is it all right? Because I live in Plainfield. And she said, yes, it was all right that Plainfield was close enough to Marshfield and we're really all part of the same community. So here I am from next door. And I just miss being with people in the flesh. You know, I think we all do. Thanks. Helen, you have to unmute. You have to unmute Helen. <laughs> okay, um, now I'm here. You got me? <laughs> uh, and Glenn, well, I, do, you. I do live in Marshfield near, near Jeannie on Hollister Hill uh, and near Susan on Hollister Hill. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I think missing, missing people. I haven't seen my older daughter in a couple of months or however long, long time. She said, at one point she said, you know, I, I won't be seeing you, I think, for maybe a few months. And I could not believe that, but I guess I do now. Okay, that's it. Thank you. My Susan. Yeah, I'm Susan Abbott. As Helen said, I live on Hollister Hill. Um, and I think I miss, um, yeah, I, I miss not so much social interaction because I'm teaching online. So I'm actually more, I'm in touch with more people than I normally am, but I do miss seeing friends. I miss seeing Atia and I miss just having you know, dinner parties with, with close friends um, and just the give and take of, you know, being able to chat um, and have them there that yeah that's that's probably what i'll be most looking forward to getting back to is seeing seeing people i care about thank you alice um i'm alice mclean um i probably miss seeing my friends and stuff 
a lot. And I also miss sports because I play sports. So, yeah. What sports do you play? Um, I would be playing soccer right now. So. And yeah. you're a Marshfield resident? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Alice. Yep. Mara? Um, I'm Tom Davis, and the thing I miss most is probably being able to hang out with my friends. Thank you. Atia? Um, what I miss most is, like most of you, um, being able to talk with my friends, like face to face, and just being able to go out and do stuff like outside of your house. Do you have a yard to be in? Yeah, but I mean like going out to eat and stuff like that. Away from your own property. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, we, we got the we got all the technology down and everything. So we want to move into sharing our personal experiences of this pandemic with each other, uh, which we may have similar experiences or we may not. Um, so as a story circle, there's going to be speakers, but it's also an experience in listening and it's easy on Zoom to not pay attention. So if you can just, you know, keep your attention and, and, and eye contact with the speaker and we'll all get to share what we heard afterwards. Um, so yeah, stay focused on the speaker instead of what you're going to say. And because this is going to be informal, if you get on and feel blank or whatever, it's okay. You know, we can, we have time to just let us sit and reflect a minute if we need to. Um, so, you know, you don't have to rehearse anything. Whatever comes up is fine. You know, you're the expert of your own experience. So you're going to just tell us in your own words and we'll keep the same talking order. Um, so you'll unmute when it's your turn. Um, and we're going to do three rounds. I think you all got the prompts. Did you get a chance to see those? Okay. And not that you, again, not that you have to have rehearsed what you're saying, but just that was just to give you a heads up so you don't feel uncomfortable about what we might be talking about. So we're going to go around three times and we'll have about three and a half minutes each to kind of respond to the prompt. prompt. And take, take as much time as you can. I know sometimes it's easy to just say a word or two or whatever. So if, if you run out of things to say, we're not going to immediately turn you off. Try to use your time if you can. And I'm going to try this. I haven't done this. I'm going to use my phone, the timer on my phone, which I think will, you'll hear beep, even though I put it on airplane mode. Paul said the timer still should beep. So we'll try that. So you'll each have about three and a half minutes and we'll, after everybody has shared three times around, then we'll open it up and we'll all unmute and have a discussion. So is everybody okay to start? Okay. So take a deep breath and everybody is muted. So Glenda, you're gonna, we're gonna start with you and just share a story about your daily life now. Well, there's not a lot of stories going on. Uh, this has been, at least for the first several weeks, a real time of slowing down, just slowing down, because there was no place to go. So my story about slowing down is baking chocolate chip cookies. And day one, I decide I want to bake chocolate chip cookies. And day two, I take the butter out of the fridge so that it's soft enough to mix with the rest of the dough. And I like to have grated orange rind in my chocolate chip cookies. So on day three, I grated the orange rind. Everything was ready on day four to actually bake, make and bake the cookies. I did not wait until day five to eat them. So that, that's my story of life in the slow lane during this time. I've had, 
I fairly recently adopted two cats who are very different and don't always get along. So I've had a huge amount of observation time just to begin to understand these creatures and get to get to know them better, get to see how they're interacting. And part of their disagreements happen because they both want to be with me, but they don't both want to be with me at the same time. So they can bully and, you know, do hiss and whatnot if, if one is getting more time with me than the other one. So that's been something that's that's different. I think it would be better for all of us if I was out of the house more. Uh, and I do get out to, you know, to walk and to garden. And I, I just feel every day I feel so fortunate to be living in Vermont, to be living in the country, to be living in a place where I can get out and this beautiful land and I've got a little pond in my backyard and there's all kind of duck activity and sometimes there are geese I have to go out and shoo them away um, but I don't know stories stories it's sort of like retiring when I first retired from teaching I thought I had all this time and that's how I felt at the beginning of this pandemic oh I don't have to go anywhere now everything is canceled but everything came on zoom except the chorus rehearsals we couldn't we couldn't sing on zoom so, so that's time Glenda I didn't uh, did you did anybody hear the timer no. No, I think, yeah, I think it's not. Uh, it wasn't loud enough. Really? So that's all right. I'll just do this. <laughs> oh, I didn't know what you were doing. Uh, or Pam, do you want to take over? Do you, what, what would be the best way for me to tell people when time is up, do you think? Is I could, maybe the visual is the best does this work for people <laughs> you know i could i could actually find a, i could unmute myself and get, and have a nice little chime bell go on how about that I'll, I'll ring a little bell that sounds great okay i'll ring a bell when the time is up okay and actually i have a little let me see if everybody can recognize what the sound would be There's okay gonger <laughs> oh there it is let's see can everybody hear this Not really, huh? All right, does anybody not hear it? Okay. All All right. Right. This, can you hear it when somebody is talking? Oh, gosh. Glenda, well, try doing it now. Pam, do it while I'm talking. So see if we can hear it. Did you hear it? All right, well, I'll, I can hear it. So if, if you know, I'll, I'll use a visual cue if we need that too. Okay. So Helen, you wanna tell us what your daily life is like? All right. Well, when the when the first days that we had to be just cooped up in the house, it's been a very slow, cold spring. So, been except for a very few days, it's been hard to be outside a lot. Um, and so, I I felt like I didn't know what to do with myself quite. Uh, and I think it was you know more thinking about this. Uh, whole thing that that was uh, not very comfortable so it took me a while but then uh, uh, we were in touch with our older daughter and she said she needed face masks for the staff at her medical clinic in Richmond and would I make some masks well Plainfield I know Plainfield has a lot of very nifty mask makers, but I thought, well, I would try my hand at it. So I did make some and I'm still making them. When I 
can't think of what else to do with myself. I, I make masks. So there's one and there's another. And so I've been doing that. And uh, I've been Zooming with friends. And also I had a, a whole week of piano camp on Zoom. Usually I go to Bennington for a piano camp for a week. And this was pretty different. Um, but it was, uh, it kept me very, very busy for, it was like week before last, something like that. Um, so that was, that was pretty good. I've been talking with Samara some. Uh, we haven't quite got into the groove of how to uh, uh, spend time together. Uh, you know, that we, we usually read uh, together and, and a couple of times she's, uh, she's come to the house and we're, we need to sort of figure out how to get into that. But anyway, as far as what I'm doing, I don't I don't have any animals. I think it would be nice to have animals at this time. I have a husband, which that's part of it. <laughs> and um, it is strange not really to see other human beings, except for Nessa, our other daughter, who comes. She brings us groceries, but really, except for meeting a few neighbors on the on the road and so on hardly seen anybody and that's it's pretty strange pretty darn strange so uh i can't think what else now now we can get into the garden and that's very good and i have projects to do like i'm fixing a door that fell off so on the shed outside so that's that's a project so i think that's all for me I can't, can't hear you. Yeah, Susan, what's your life been yeah. during this pandemic time? Well, it's actually not been that different than my life usually is because I'm, I work, I work alone and um, I'm a painter and so I spend a lot of time anyway on my own, but I do um, also travel a lot and that's been the big change for me. I, I teach art workshops and so all my classes four of them had been canceled. So I would have been in Alaska and France and in Washington. And uh, th those, those all got either rescheduled for fall and who knows if they'll happen then or canceled. So it's been, I initially felt quite panicky because it was a big loss of income for me. So I um, had the idea to start teaching online and I've now I'm doing my third online class and it's been, very weird because I'm actually a lot busier and more in contact with people than I normally am. Um, usually I just have short bursts where I'm around people uh, teaching and now it's like I've, I'm constantly either on the phone or emailing or zooming with students so it's been, it's been a very weird reversal that I'm actually much more social now than I normally am um, although it's all at a distance so I you know it's not really a substitute for um, human contact, but it's certainly I'm busier. I'm busier in a social way than I normally am. So it's been probably one. In, it's been weird in that respect, <laughs> but good. I mean, I've been very happy to have that contact and also to have you know like some 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 income um, coming in during this time. Um, and it's made me also learn new skills. I've learned to make instructional videos. I've learned to use. Um, social media in a more active way than I have. <clears throat> and so that's been fun. I mean, it's been fun learning new new skills. Um, I, I haven't felt a lot of anxiety because I think my husband and I have been very careful, like I'm sure all of you have been um, very um, kind of early on. We had friends visit us from out of town on the 15th of March. And at that point we were thinking, this is kind of crazy, you know, to have people coming in um, on an airplane in the city and then just decided not to worry about that. But after that, we pretty much stopped even going to the grocery store. I, I go in um, 
James found some N two N95 masks in the basement he'd gotten for sweeping up dust down there. So we got these two like really good masks that we pull on if we have to go into the grocery store or whatever. So it's it's been in in somebody I think it was Glenda said that she realized oh I don't have to go anywhere and that's actually been a wonderful thing. I mean I really love having a whole day with nothing on my calendar which is pretty rare and so it's actually been pretty great to have like no appointments you know don't have to go anywhere because everything's closed um so i guess i'm kind of a hermit because i've actually welcomed that i think it's going to be hard to look at my calendar again and see that my days are broken up with having to go into town or even you know to go travel somewhere for two weeks i've actually loved that expansive sense of you know, really not have any op any obligations um, because everything's closed. So I can't say it's been, I feel extremely fortunate, like Linda said, that I live where I live. I mean, it makes me feel like, yeah, we really did the right thing 30 years ago, getting out of Washington, D.C. and moving here. My poor sister is stuck on the 13th floor in an apartment building in D.C. She's afraid to go out for good reason. And, you know, she's living in a two-bedroom apartment for months and um i'm just very very thankful that we have food security with our co-ops and our gardens and that we've got um the ability to just walk outside and be in the woods you know it, it i think it's really made me feel way less constricted than many people have felt i just think for a lot of vermonters our lives not haven't you know radically changed in some fundamental ways Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, we. It's true. We're all learning either to adapt or use Zoom or, or uh, you know, get better at it. Uh, I thought it was interesting, Susan, that you kind of chose, you know, pinned the date down that you stopped interacting and going out socially. If if you, Alice, you'll be next. So if you guys want to um, talk about the last thing you did, uh, feel free to. Uh, to, to mention that because March 13th was the last day I had anyone at my house or saw anyone socially for the next few months. So Alice, you're up. Okay. Let's, um, what's your life been like? <laughs> um, well, it's been significantly different um, because, you know, school being all online now is super weird. Um, yeah, I've had to get used to um, getting, remembering when I have Zoom classes. And I mean, I've been pretty good about that. But yeah, just like trying to like stay on top of my work and trying to learn things remotely, which is definitely harder, but I'm, it, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's not bad. Um, also, what's it, like, what's it like to have to learn remotely? What's the, the difference? Um, well, it's okay so like I have classes once a day but in regular school I would have kind of classes like all day and then like math class and like um, uh, English and science and all that kind of stuff and social studies is now we only have it once a week now when we normally have it every day so when we learn a new skill in like math, math has definitely been the hardest. So when we learn a new skill in math, we have to go the whole week and kind of like teach it to ourselves as much as we can because the teacher can only, you know, provide us with so much information. And since we have only one day a week, it's, it's been hard, but you know, I'm hanging in there. I think my whole class is doing a good job staying on top of all of our stuff. Um, yeah, it's been interesting. I've been able to kind of pick out my own schedule, be able to be flexible, just that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, also sport. You find it easy to structure your own days? Um, yes and no. It's, I definitely get distracted easier when I'm at home, but yeah, I like being able to pick out when I get to do my stuff. So yeah, um, sports has definitely been 
much it's been so different um because normally I would be playing I would just be ending my indoor soccer season and just starting my outdoor soccer season and both of those have been canceled so normally we would not even be like yeah, normally we'd be so busy on weekends, we wouldn't have anything to do. Like, normally we don't get to yard work. We were talking about this. We don't only get to yard work until, like, Memorial Day weekend. But now we're, like, almost done with all of our yard work. So that's really it's good. But it's also disappointing that I'm missing out on all my sports. Yeah. Um, How do you get exercise? Um, I take lots of walks. Um, I've been walking a lot. I been taking like we have a you know Marshfield Village it's a very there's like a playground which I don't really use but you know um there's a loop and stuff river um that there's a path we can walk on so I've been taking walks obviously six feet with a few like one of my friends once a day so that's been that's been good yeah thank you so yeah. So Samara, are you ready to tell us about what your days have been like? And when did you when did you start being just at home? Do you remember? Well, the biggest event that happened before this whole isolation thing was probably my birthday. Party. When was that? Um, like March fourth. And you had a big party with people? Yeah. And well, then I guess. <laughs> no, it's okay. Pardon me? Say that again? And well, um, I mean, it's, it's sad that we're not doing school, but I kind of like to be able to do it at my own pace. And are you not being able to do it at your own pace? Oh, no, I can do it at my own pace, which is nice. Okay, so you like that difference? Yeah, because this is really different. This is the, probably the first time in years of your life that you didn't have a whole day where you were had, knew what you had to do. Somebody scheduled for you. Yeah. And, well, we've been going on lots of walks, too um in bike rides so that's been nice so you got to play more yeah do you have sisters and brothers um yes i have two brothers and two step brothers and a sister so is that who you walk with and everything yeah i go for runs with my mom in the morning too And at home, when you're in the house, what's your favorite things to do since you can't get out with um, friends? I read a lot of comic books. <laughs> and we cook a lot. We've been doing a lot of cooking. So that's nice. Do you have a favorite thing that you learned to cook? Um, we've just been kind of making a whole bunch of different things. And I don't really have a favorite. It's just fun to like cook something different. So are you Zooming with friends? Are you getting to yeah. be with friends on computer? Um, I have this app called Messenger and I can like talk to my friends through that. That's funny, my granddaughter just uh, had me learn about Messenger Kids. So I only just learned what it was. Have you had it? Did you just get it after your birthday? Yeah, we just figured out that it existed because we um, were using it as like a social thing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And uh, are you are you um, do you and Helen still meet weekly or how do you? Yeah. How do, yeah? We messenger each other and that's super fun. Uh -huh. Like she said, we're still trying to figure out like something we can do together. I know it's uh it's 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 it, you know it's a time to get creative, but 
uh, we have to do it differently, right? What have you come up with anything yet? Can you read books together? I mean, we probably could. Mm -hmm. It's just really different, huh? Yeah. Different than in person. Well, thank you very much, Samara. We'll go to Atia and have her tell us what her life is being like right now. When did you, um, when was your last day out, out in the world? <laughs> I mean, pretty much when they gave the stay at home order. I don't, I haven't a specific date. Um, I, I've like a lot of people, I've been taking a lot more walks. Um, I, I found that it's probably about, I think, I think people are being forced to like be creative with what they do since they can't go out to the town and find something to do there. So walking is one of the next best things. And yeah. Uh, sorry. That's all right. So before before the um, stay in order, what you normally would have gone somewhere after school? Well, I mean, no, but I also don't have, I also, this, I'm one of the last people on the bus. So I've got like two, almost two hours extra each day because I don't have to ride the bus. Um, it's like 45 minutes each way. Mm. So, so you have all that extra time plus not being at school. Yeah. So, so I just. Yeah. yeah. Does the day feel? What does the day feel like? Does it feel long? Or I, does it go by fast for you? It yeah, it really does go by faster. Um, like Alice was saying, I get to decide what I want to do first, um, and that helps. And then, like, I I and I get done with my work pretty fast, um, and then I have the whole day. You mean your schoolwork? Yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry. That's okay. Because uh, what it made me think of was, I wonder whether you guys are being have more chores to do at home now that you're home more, or how does that work? <laughs> no, I have the same chores, but <laughs> I'm super glad they didn't decide to do that. As in, they as in my parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, and do you have how many people are in your family in your house right now? My um, my parents are divorced, so in at one household I have my mom, my sister, and me. Um, so there's just three, but in the other, my sister, in in the other households. Um, I've got, there's actually five people, including me and my sister with like my dad, um, and my stepsister and stepmom. So you do go back and forth? I do every week. So both households quarantined for a while and then you felt safe to be at each other's houses at both houses? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you get a change of scenery? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it really is nice to have most of the day to just kind of, I don't know, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I sort of imagine kids your age don't get a lot of time to lounge around or just hang or, you know, do it, just, you know, just be, you know, seems yeah, like I mean. <laughs> school work and sports and other scheduled activities, but you're enjoying it? Yeah, I am. I do, I do miss, my friends and Susan, um, and I miss being able to like go out, but it it's kind of nice. I mean, if you, if you don't think about that, it's, we're not, if you don't think about the fact that we're quarantined because of a disease that's killing people, um, it's kind of nice. Great, thank you so much, okay. That you can, um, we're gonna move on to the second, the second part, which is um, 
The second question is about telling us a problem solving strategy you're using at this time, which, you know, sounds to me already we're touching on some of the problem solving that comes around having to zoom as a mentor and mentee. So if you do have any tips to share about what you've come up with or, you know, have thought about, feel free to do that. But just any, any other things that, you know, have become uh, things that you've had to challenges you've had, you've been faced with that you've had to solve like we've all had to learn how to get food without going to the store or whatever um so helen do you, i mean uh, glenda do you want to tackle that tackle that question muting me what i i just unmuted oh sorry go ahead um <laughs> uh, well without meetings and obligations outside it leaves a more unstructured day so although i really don't like to have rigid structures in fact i rebel against them uh all of a sudden so there's no structure except that my cats wake me up about six o'clock and say it's time to get up and i say no it's not time to get up uh, but i do belong to a buddhist temple and once they got their internet going there were regular programs like a regular meditation at seven o'clock in the morning okay that's a structure uh so that's helping and of course i make my usual to-do list which doesn't begin to get done in a day but but it helps uh, I, I don't know what to say about problem solving. I mean, I really, well, Sunday was such a beautiful day and everybody was out. And I did go for a walk with a friend in the morning. And then I met with the gals next door we talked on my back deck in the afternoon and another friend from chorus came by later in the afternoon picking up some shrubs at east hill tree farm so i mean it was just this huge social event uh and and that was a lovely change and it really fills my day uh, i am a writer i like you know i really i love silence i love the silence um, and i find i listen less and less to the radio because it's just kind of jarring i don't want to listen to covid 19 news all day uh, I do want to get out for walks. I don't, it, it's a bit of a, just getting out enough is, is a bit of a challenge to, once I kick myself out the door, then I'm fine. I have all kinds of things I enjoy doing outside. It's just kicking myself out the door and I haven't quite solved that one yet, but I do get out the door and, uh, so yeah, it, on the whole, like Susan, I've really enjoyed kind of being on retreat. I know it's been really hard for some people, but I'm lucky. Thanks, Glenda. Helen, have you had any problems or challenges with whatever, as a gardener, as a person, as a mentor, as a, <laughs> that you? Well, I, I, I think that I, I, I haven't had too much trouble adapting to this 
isolation because like a lot of people, uh, I, I, I'm retired and I don't, I don't go out, have not gone out regularly every day uh, in the past. So I, I've been at home for years. And, and so in a way it's, it's been, it's been fairly easy. Um, but I think the problem for me really is figuring out for myself and, and, and trying to deal with the fact that this may go on for us for a very long time. Um, it, not to be too gloomy, but you know, somebody was saying, I mean, that's kind of a joke that, that, oh yes, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, we have a uh, few, few cases now in, in, in Vermont. That means there's more room in the hospital for me or for you. <laughs> you know, it's like, yes, the healthcare system won't be overwhelmed, but there is no cure and there is no vaccine yet for this thing and I don't want to get it. So the, the question and the problem for me is figuring out how the future will shape up. And um, so I can kind of deal with things as they come along every day. It's not too hard so far. So. And you've gotten your garden in, okay? Getting uh, yes, I had I had a new I had a knee replacement a couple of months ago, and um, so um, my physical capabilities at this point are somewhat limited. I get really tired, so I do stints of work and then I quit. That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. Wow! So that was before the shutdown. Before, before, yeah, a month before. Boy, yeah. good timing. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> good or bad, however you want to look at it. I yeah. do physical therapy online. Oh, wow. That's, that's a problem solved. Yeah. Yes. yes. Before you it, 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 it is. Because the, the last time I was out was for a physical therapy appointment on March 11th, something like that. So. Thanks, yes. Helen. Susan. So my big problem, um, well, I want to also um, say, echo what Atia said, that it's, it's, you know, I, it's like we can feel good about where we are as long as we're not thinking too much about, you know, the reason we're having this retreat, which is really quite nice in some respects, is because it's terrible to be out there. I, I appreciate it saying that because it's easy to forget that where we live, you know, that there's a reason that we're isolated the way we are. But my my big problem was um, was work related. You know, just seeing my my work drawing up. Um, not my painting so much, although galleries are dead in the water right now. But also the the teaching that I do, um, which is, involves travel, and that is all um, sort of evaporated from. And so the way I solved that was to scurry, kind of scurry around and figure out how to take my work online, and um, and that's been that's been that's been good, and it's um, worked out fine but it's also really really filled my my days and my nights up it's been very intensive and both the learning curve i've had and just dealing with you know 20 people like all the time and having to be available um the way i've structured them I'm, I'm, I'm quite available to them so usually i teach i go off for a week and it's intense but then i'm i have a month where i'm not dealing with you know pretty much anybody and now it's people all the time, which is, like I said before, very ironic because I'm supposedly I'm socially isolated. Um, so, but it's also been a good distraction. But I also sometimes get a pang like I'm not living more like Glenda, where, you know, I'm really having a retreat, um, it, using it as an opportunity for that um, because it's it hasn't been that. 
for me, it's been, you know, kind of a filling up rather than an emptying out. Um, but it, it worked well for me, maybe because I just can't sit with anxiety that comfortably. It worked well for me just to jump, to jump into something and feel control. It allowed me to feel control that like, well, my work wasn't evaporating. I was inventing a new kind of work and um, that I can even continue to do. If I decide I don't want to travel so much, I think this is sustainable if I decide I want to keep doing it. Yeah, so that's been my big problem solved. And there are ways I can streamline what I'm doing, I think, so it's not so labor intensive. All that's going to take more work in order to figure out like how to organize my classes so that they're more um, structured and I don't have to improvise all the time and, and kind of keep making it up um, every week to week. Oh. Um, and that's, um, feel free to finish that thought. Oh, it's just, that's just going to be a decision about which way I want to take teaching. Do I want to keep doing the travel or do I want to do more, you know, do more virtual kind of teaching? Yeah. But so it's, I mean, it, it has changed. I mean, it has like, this has really kind of changed, um, opened up a new opportunity or, you know, I'll have to make a decision, I think, about which I want to do more of. Yeah, or, you know, make the mix different. So yeah. are you, and are you selling items like paintings online as well as doing classes or? Um, I don't, I don't sell a lot online. I mostly have galleries, but um, some of the galleries now are going to, I mean, they're having to go to more, you know, online sales. So yeah. uh, there hasn't, no, there hasn't been a whole lot of that, but part of there is a need to kind of keep up social media um, for artists, like a lot of people in the arts, musicians and such. In this day and age, you handle a lot of your own marketing anyway. So that's that hasn't changed. If anything, it's gotten more intense because people now are on online so much, um, you know, doing that for themselves. And even the businesses that usually handle some of that have shut down. So everything sort of shifted to this weird virtual kind of marketplace yeah it really is a transition time that way as we're seeing different options and trying to decide how it's going to change not only our our present but our future yeah thanks mm -hmm. alice have you had some problems you've had to deal with as a student as a family person as a whatever <laughs> um, i wouldn't call them like Pro they're not necessarily like problems. They're more just like uh, things that have come. Yeah, I guess. I guess that kind of problem. Yeah. yeah. Challenges. Challenges. Yeah. Okay. Um. Probably. Um. <laughs> sorry, my dog. Okay. Hold on one second. I'll wait till he stops barking. Um. Sorry. Um. Yeah. Um. Probably. Like. I've always been good at managing my like, own time, but just like this takes it to like a whole nother level, just like trying to like, because I get all my, since everything is online now, like I get all my assignments, but then I don't have like my teachers there to either help me through it or like, I don't know, remind me that this is due. Like I just don't have that like, so managing my time has definitely been something that's, can I ask you about that? So when you have a class, is it is it with a group online with mm -hmm. the teacher? But then you, after that, you don't have access to well, questions and stuff? I can email them. I can Zoom them. It's just, they just have, like, I mean, like, I can get, reach out to them, but it's not like I can, like. They're not right there. Yeah, they're not there to, like, help me. Especially, yeah, like I said, with math, it's very, very different. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I mean, like, science and English and social studies is, is kind of always, like, I don't know. Like, I can always, like, that stuff is always, like, always, like, there. I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> math is definitely new skills that are coming in that I'm learning. So, yeah. And uh, any other things you've had to learn how to do that you can't do now that you did where you had to find out how do I get this or what am I going to do now that I can't do that? Um, probably just filling my time like 
what to do when I am done with my schoolwork or mm-hmm. already gone for three walks today, like something like that. Like, uh-huh. but yeah, that's been a challenge, but I like to bake and do art and stuff. So that's helps. So, and so you're doing different things in your day would have been. Yeah. So you're doing more cooking and art than you would have done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Thank you. Samara, you want to tell us about what, how, what you've had to do because it's not like it used to be? Um, well, probably the biggest challenge would be when I need to get away from my siblings or from my dad. Um, and, uh, and get some private time. Yeah, and sometimes I go for walks or go down to the park. And um, my dad has an RV, so sometimes I'll just go hang out there. And you are you comfortable just hanging out alone? Is that something you like? Yeah. So that that's not the challenge. It's more getting enough time, private time. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. And did you do... Um, any extracurricular activities at school? Yeah, I did soccer. So I'm kind of bummed that we can't do that again. Do you have a soccer ball at home? Yeah. Not, not that you can play with other people, but. Yeah, but our backyard is not really a good place to play soccer. Mm. And any any and I'm wondering if any of you girls have had any. Uh, I hear with adults anyway, there are hair issues. Either how do I get a haircut now, or <laughs> you know, I don't know if you had things you liked to buy or do. You know, go to the store to get candy, or I don't know what. You know. Um, well, not really. I mean, I didn't usually go to the store anyway, but. I I miss creamies. You miss creamies. Yeah. That's right. That's something we can't make at home. Yeah. Hmm. And all right. Anything else you want to say? Not really. That was it. Okay. Thanks, Samara. Atia. Um, what challenges have you had to work with? I mean, at first, the, we work, um, my, my teachers are posting assignments on Google Classroom right now, and at first that was super, like, hard for my brain because of, um, they didn't, they didn't really have much organization, so I'm, uh, just, like, writing down my assignments in a, in the calendar app really helps. Is that um, is that a new one you're using? Huh? Is the calendar new for you to be using? Um yeah, cuz usually I wouldn't need to have reminders of what I need to be done, doing. Um uh like some people are saying um Actually, unlike Samara, no offense. Um, wait. No, never mind. Please. Um, did you did you did you have extracurricular activities, clubs, or you know, besides sports or things that you? Um, I do soccer too, but that I only do. Um, but it's in the fall, so I don't. I'm not. I don't think I'll miss out on that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I might, but I hope not. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do, I do like to go out to like cafes on the weekend sometime, mm-hmm. um, and that's it, I, I, I miss that. And is um, it mostly the being out, or did you get to have something like a latte, or I don't know what you like? <laughs> you can't. <make> um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, I miss being able just to go out. I mean, I, I am enjoying kind of not, I, I'm enjoying the fact that I'm getting outside more, but
but I still wish that I could like go out to the town. So your problem has been that that way of getting out. And is it is it like seeing other people and socializing, or is it just the just the new get just, just entertainment? Like the, entertainment. Yeah, I mean, I do miss people, but that's not the main problem for me because I have a sister, and my stepsister. Um. Mm. So. Right. Yeah. Um. Like, uh, I, I'm really glad that I have pets because they're super nice and fun to spend time with. Now that I don't have that many humans I can spend time with. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. Yeah, I think for uh, anyone who lives alone too, a pet, I mean, we're not getting, if we don't, aren't getting hugs and so forth, it's really nice to have a pet to yeah. love up. <laughs> Thanks, Satya. All right, so uh, we're, we'll work on our last, our last topic here uh, that we're sharing about, which is an interaction. So this is for you, Glenda, an interaction you've had with someone during this time that you may not have have, have occurred under normal circumstances. And that has to mean, you know, probably digital, but not necessarily. The Is interaction that, that you've had with someone yeah. since we've been shut in that might not have happened without this circumstance. Oh, I was expecting a different question. Well, uh, what were you expecting? I've, I've had, yeah, there is one anyway. I have twin grandsons who are eight years old. And when I got my new laptop several years ago, it had Skype. So, wow, we're going to Skype. Well, no. <laughs> The years went by and nothing happened until the pandemic. They live in Massachusetts. We can't visit one another. So lo and behold, we are Zooming and my grandsons get to show me all the Legos they have been building and explain. I mean, it's, it's all beyond me. But Anyway, I think were it not for this pandemic, we might never have activated uh, you know, virtual visits. So, so that's been a good thing. And more frequent than you might have seen them maybe? Well, they call more frequently. I think they're a little concerned, which is nice. <laughs> So I get more phone calls, uh, especially from my daughter-in-law. So that's all increased communication, even though it's virtual, it's, it's been very good, very reassuring. And so you've set that up as a regular thing? No, nothing is regular. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, when you've got two eight-year-olds, life isn't regular and my daughter-in-law is a teacher so she's you know half the day teaching her students and half the day homeschooling her kids and, and life is very full down there and my son is trying to do his work at home um, but but that's been a a new form of communication which is kind of opened up things. I don't know that I'm communicating with, well, maybe more with neighbors, you know, because they're there and we can actually like <laughs> talk to one another in the flesh. Uh, so your neighbors are close enough by so I can, well, if I'm walking down the road and Monica's out in her garden, you know, we can, we can just talk. 
Cool. So that's nice. Or, you know, other neighbors, but thank you. All right. Helen, do you understand the question? Just, you know, how, how is your interaction with people been different because it's this time that, you know, interactions you might not have had? Uh, I'm gonna, I, oh, I just, okay. <laughs> Don't touch it. Okay. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> oh, I, I'm not, at the moment, I can't think of any, anybody that I, you know, that I'm interacting with that I would not have done before. It's, it's, you know, most of it's been online. My, um, um, or on the phone with Are family and, and, uh, my physical therapist and my friends at piano camp, teachers at piano camp, that was all online. But I think, you know, what, something that's, that's a little, a little bit, uh, newer for me than, than, than usual in this time is that I've been, watching animals more i don't have an animal in the house so and i miss that but i there's nothing to do about it um so i've been watching animals outside and you know birds like i see the blue heron has come back and it's flying over and uh some ravens have come to visit the compost heap which is very exciting and uh and and there was a moose across the road the other day Maybe it went down to Susan's pond. I don't know. Did you see a moose, Susan? No. It's not. No. People have seen a bear. People around up this end have seen a big bear. Yeah, I haven't seen a bear. What? what how Mind big was I... it? On where was it heading? It was heading. Uh, it was. It was across the road, going behind Janet's house. So wow. maybe look for foot, footprints around your pond. Maybe it stopped at your pond. That that I've never known a moose to be up on our road. Have you? Yes, one rarely, rarely. But this was sure. Jules thought, "Oh, it's a horse," but then he looked again and said, "No, moose." <laughs> it was very spectacular. So <laughs> anyway, so and I said, reading reading natural history articles or books um, is somehow calming. It's like. I can't quite get into novels as much, though, you know, I guess I'm reading a novel now, but, but reading natural about, about uh, the world that is not, the part of the world that's not affected by this virus is a good thing, I find. Yeah, yeah, it is interesting, yeah. And I know uh, some people are, you know, connecting with old, old friends. Everybody's checking in with people they wouldn't normally check in with, you know, old friends. And how are you getting along yeah. over there in your state and whatever, or emailing someone they might not have emailed so much. Um, but uh, thank you very much. I'll look for the moose. <laughs> we yeah, just, so we you just had a flurry of emails about the bear. So uh, yeah. that's what we're dealing with here. Uh, Susan. How about interactions you've had that are different because of this pandemic? I mean, we know about the classes, of course, but are there other, whether it's emailing, phone calling, you know, just connecting differently with or with different people? Um, I've probably been more in touch with my siblings, um, but I'm, you know, I say I'm fairly close touch with them anyway. They live in different parts of the country. Um, no, I think I have to go back to my classes. That one thing that has been different is that I did a five week class where I mentored um, 14 painters. So it was very, it was a very different approach because I actually was in close touch with people over an extended period of time watching uh, a painting project develop for them. And again, it's kind of a surprise that even though it was done through phone calls and email, and Facebook, it felt like I had more involvement in their work in a more intimate way than I've had through physical classes. So that's been, that was a surprise. I would not have expected that. Yeah. Um, part of it was the extended time that we were working pretty much, I was checking in 
or they were checking with me pretty much, you know, every other day for five weeks. So it was really an opportunity to see, well, to get to know them and um, on some level, on a personal level, but also just to see their work develop and have a hand in helping them shape that in a way that because I don't teach a semester kind of class in an art school, I'm only kind of fly in and do weeks or weekends with people that um, I I liked, you know, it was a surprise for me and something that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for this horrible virus. Um, for, I would just go back to what Helen said. I I think one of the things that I, I'm going to be sorry changes is that how much the natural world has had a break from humans during this time, you know, and it's been a time for animals, I think, to kind of come back and take over um, parts um, where people have hogged a lot of space and had a bad impact on animal life. That's been, I feel sorry. I feel like warning them, hey, it's not always going to be like this where you can walk down the middle of a city street or, <laughs> uh, you know, it's going to change back with and probably with a worse than it was probably to make up for the last two months. But um, it has been something to think about that if there is the will to do something like with climate change, obviously big changes can happen very quickly. Who would have guessed it, that our economy would totally shut down in two months? And that's got a good and a bad side to it. And um, it goes to show that things are not just sort of set on clockwork and they just kind of keep on running along, you know, forever and they're impossible to turn that's impossible to turn that ocean liner around. I mean, it get it can get turned around on a dime if we have to. And uh, it would be great if these kinds of changes happen as a result of a plan and, you know, will to do good instead of just reaction to a terrible thing. But um, I think there's a lesson in that maybe that could end up being productive, you know, that we yeah, things aren't, don't have to be the way they are forever, that big changes can happen very quickly. Thank you. Good point. Um, so Alice, um, have you been interacting differently with people in your life, contacted people you wouldn't normally? Yeah. Um, my dad's side of the family, they, we kind of, they, we kind of live off, I mean, they live far away. They live in New York and Pennsylvania. So it, that we've been Zooming with them on Thursdays every week and we would, normally not do that at all like we I mean like we're, we like call them and stuff but like it's like now like we do it regularly so that's di different but it's also good so that's good yeah that's a, probably the only yeah thing that how I've been communicating different with people I mean obviously and, I've been spending more time on FaceTime with my friends and stuff but and do you spend sort of the same amount of time with your friends than you would have just like by phone or some other way or? No, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, normally like on weekends, I'd be at my friend's houses and I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely different, but it's okay. Um, yeah. Thanks, Alice. Yep. Samara, have you... Um, um, I'm sorry, I did. I missed what you said. <laughs> say that again. Okay. I didn't say anything. Do you have people that you're talking to that you might not have talked to before on the phone? Any grandparents or friends or? Not really. I mean, we've been talking to our grandparents more than usual and our cousins that live in New Jersey, but we would still call them. Um, before this whole pandemic, just mm -hmm. Much. Mm -hmm. just maybe talking a little more. Yeah. And I was wondering. Yep. Yeah, sorry. I've been talking to my friends, but that's really it. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you get to do you? I don't know how many friends you have, but like, do you see them uh, the same amount of time, or is it one friend you talk to more than others? Some people like the phone and some don't, you know? 
sometimes it's overwhelming because I have so many friends there to talk to, but it's so nice, and they're like getting stuck to Helen. Nice. <laughs> and do you, do you, do you, um, mentees and mentors, I mean, have you discussed this whole pandemic? I mean, or do you, is it just time spent together and you don't want to talk about that? I mean, I guess we just don't really think about it. Mm -hmm. It's just time to be together. And then, and you get to talk about whatever you want. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Samara. Natia. Um, I really, I haven't been making much an effort to connect with people that much other than my friends. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I guess I just don't really need social as much. I mean, I don't know. Um, I haven't had any, um, I haven't had an interaction with anyone I wouldn't have normally. Um, yeah. What's your um, What's your method of communicating with people? Um, oh, uh, do you have a silver lining? Um, my my method of communicating with people is I, I mean I use. Google Hangouts, um, and that works well. Uh, I don't, I mean, my silver lining for this whole thing really is like you get time to kind of just take a break and you, you kind of learn how to um entertain yourself when you don't you have as much stuff going on um yeah great so you get to be more independent and self-motivated mm -hmm. great uh so i'm gonna invite everybody to unmute And, you know, we can I, it make it maybe hard if somebody starts talking uh, over someone else. So, uh, you know, I'll encourage hand raising if we need to go to that. <laughs> but uh, does anybody want to say anything about what they heard or add something that came up for you while you were listening to someone else? Anybody can speak. I was curious at the difference. Oh, go ahead, uh, Samara. I, um, I just wanted to say that I, I agree with Atia. I think this is a really good time to like make do with what we have and try to uh, like entertain ourselves without being able to go out and like see a movie at the movie. Yeah. yeah. Glenda. Well, I have realized something about my mentee, Alice, because of everything she has had to go through in terms, she's an eighth grader. They would have had the big canoe trip at the end of eighth grade that can't happen this year. She is passionate about sports. She's a big soccer player. Her whole family is into soccer. After school weekends, you know, and none of that can happen now. I mean, it's, it seems to me this is a big, a big difference, a big loss in her life in terms of what she really looks forward to. And yet, she is so calm about it. She is so taking it in stride. Mm -hmm. I am just amazed, Alice. I hope I am not embarrassing you, but you have this wonderful, <laughs> wonderful equanimity uh, that it's not 
the end of the world, that all these things that a young woman, a young eighth grader would be looking forward to so much. Thank you. And are not happening. Now, Alice and I have had kind of a little joke about when I'll ask her what she wants to do during the days when we could actually do things. And she would say, well, I don't really care. Or I'd say, you want to do this or that? Well, you decide. <laughs> you know, and I, I was concerned about her not <coughs> being decisive. But what I'm seeing now is that's part of this whole equanimity that <coughs> it's not, it doesn't make a big difference to her. She's okay with this or she's okay with that. And I think I just really appreciate that quality in her. Thank you. Helen, did you want to say something? Helen? Oh, yeah. I, I, I want, from what, I, from what I've heard this afternoon, it seems like the schoolwork part of all the mentees' days, something they take in, in their stride and they're really okay with it and uh i'm i'm pretty amazed by that if it's true <laughs> and um i i i wonder you know the proportion of it. i think uh, Atya spoke about getting the work out of the way which would seem to be wonderful and then you have you have your own time much more and is that common among all, all of you, Alice and 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 Samara? Mm -hmm. Did you try to you all try to do that? Yeah, yeah, so definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you know if you get back to school in the fall, let's hope that can really happen. Um, um, you know, whatever, whoever maybe has had had trouble doing this um school without being there will it won't be a big obstacle to get over that's my sense i don't know what do you think anybody <laughs> i i think that it i think i think that a lot of kids are like getting their work done going like perfectly well but then there's also other kids that aren't doing their work and just like not they just like kind of just not doing that kind of stuff and I think that's what's going to affect if we go back next year that's what's going to affect that's going to like affect like the whole grade because if one like yeah I don't know like I guess like if we're all at different places, it's hard for the teacher to teach us all something. So it might have to be either some kids miss out on some stuff or other kids, we have to go back and relearn everything. So. What about, what about, what about kids? I read about this. I read this Chinese book in which kids who are behind, who were helped by the kids who had already gotten it. And so yeah. everybody could get up to speed. I wonder if, in this in this time that such a thing could happen when yeah. you all get back to school yeah i definitely think that that will probably happen i i yeah i have a question for you girls um you know how do you feel about the prospect of school being closed for the rest of the year would you prefer to go back or are you just mm -hmm. as fine with it being closed I honestly, I I'm fine with it being closed for the rest of like this school year, but I really do hope it's open by um, by next year. Yeah, me too. I think like um, I don't really mind school being closed right now, but in the fall, I do want it to be open so um, that we can do soccer and that we can go back to our normal routine.
Any last comments? Susan. Susan wants to say something. Yeah, here she go. Okay. You have to unmute Susan. Oh, there you go. Um, so I yeah, I was thinking that um it must feel sort of like a gift of having a lot more time, especially Atia, like you with that bus ride. And then also having a certain amount of time at school or it's probably frustrating because you're having to deal with the whole class and sometimes you just want to be, you know, being able to focus on your own thing. So I do miss like what I think Ati and I like to do is basically not a lot. Like we just enjoy reading and playing chess or just kind of hanging out and eating and <laughs> stuff like that. So it's sort of a shame because we have a lot of time to do that now, but we don't have the ability to do it now because we can't get together. So I'll be glad when you know we're back able to just spend a nice time together, um, hopefully by the summer. But I, I was just going to ask, are you guys reading more on your own? Do, do you find your, Atia, you're a big reader. Are you reading even more now or uh, about the same? No, honestly, I don't think I've been reading much more. I should read more, um, but I think I'm reading about as much as I did usually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. That my two hour long bus ride actually was the time I read the most I read on the bus ride. Um, so now that I don't have that, I think I might actually be reading less now that I think about it, but I'm still reading. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't, I was sort of like Helen, I really haven't been able to mentally focus on, on reading books that much right now, but. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny how just the different, even though we have more time, it doesn't necessarily mean we'll do the things we always wish we'd do if we had more time, <laughs> you know, given the circumstances. Um, well, uh, I'll, we'll close here. It's just about three. So I just really want to thank you for your generosity and sharing together and, and, and telling, you know, telling us what's going on for you. Um, and um, we'll eventually be putting this up on the Marshfield historical, you know, on, digitally uh, putting it up and we'll let you know when that happens. It may not happen right away because we're technically trying to figure out how to uh, how to do that because we're doing it on someone else's site but we'll let you know when it's up and and so you'll see yourselves and again if remember if there's anything that you don't want to have recorded let let me know um, otherwise it'll just go up as you know as with what you've said uh, and the other thing I just want to let you know about is also as the Marshfield Historical Society, we're, we're doing longer interviews with like uh, just two people of two different generations. So if you know anybody who would like to do that or who would like to do another story circle uh, that isn't necessarily just mentors and mentees, uh, tell them about it and let us know. And um, we're, we're still recording Marshfield community experience. So, so we're here to do that. Um, you, I think you all have my address and email and phone number from the emails I sent. So your participation is really appreciated and it's great to hear your communal voices and uh, hear how we're all in this together. Um, so we'll close now. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye, everybody. Nice, nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you, Pam. Pam, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> She's there. Oh, I was, I, I'm here. I'm here. I didn't want to. I didn't want to come in and come into the conversation. But thank you so much, everybody. It was really nice to listen. I'm sorry you couldn't hear the gong. Yeah, uh, you know, and uh, it's good. It's okay too because I think we got into a flow, and some people mm -hmm. had a little more to say, and some had a little less. So right, right. Just go with that. It's okay. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you, Pam, for coordinating. I meant to say that right up front for coordinating oh, and getting everybody together. That's no small feat. Yeah. Even if even if we have it worked, you know. It worked. <laughs> it worked. Thank you, everybody, for, for doing it. And we'll talk soon, Jean. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.